Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Carrier Global Corporation, ticker C-A-R-R. -R. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts on both the valuation of this company and its business quality. Let's dive on in. So this company has a $31 billion market cap, $35 billion EV. So there is a little bit of leverage on this business. It is in the building products industry. If we go to the business description, Carrier provides heating, ventilation, and eight air conditioning equipment, HVAC, your refrigeration, fire security. I think this was a spinoff. So it says incorporated in 2019. It's headquartered in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Um, let's see if we can get, um, so we got Carrier, company offers products. Basically, it's a, a refrigeration, HVAC unit company, um, building products. So we don't have a long history here, which makes it very difficult to assess. But if I remember correctly, this is probably a spinoff. Um, so for those of you deeply aware for this company, I'm not going to know as much because I tend to work off the numbers here and we don't have two decades of numbers like I'm used to. So there's going to be some limits to what I can say. All I know is HVAC companies tend to be relatively high quality. This is a good business generally. And so with the amount of data we have here, we will try to make that assessment. So I'm going to ignore 2017 because you can see I don't have full data for that year. But my full data does begin in 2018 when we see a really good performance, 37% return on invested capital does fall in 2019 to 13% invest return on invested capital, 11% in 2020, and 9% in 2021. So I don't like this downward trend. Downward trend's not good. However, despite it being a downward trend, you're still you know basically double-digit numbers. And so when you think about the fact that they have some leverage on this business, you're getting a return on equity, you know, average 18%. Um, I'd assume it's somewhere in the 15% range when I look at this. You see 2021, 24%, 18%, 14%, 38%. So all very good numbers. All these return on equity numbers are very strong. What you care about though is like, what does your growth look like? And really, we can see you do have pretty solid growth when you go across this whole time period going from 18 billion up to 20.6 billion in 2021. Um, it's not stable each and every year, but with the pandemic, we can be a little forgiving in that because that would have had some effect on how things were going. But some markers of what you can see good business here, very, very stable gross margins. If the gross margins aren't moving a lot, that means they have some pricing power. They're able to hit the numbers they want to hit. 20.9.9, 29.4, 29.1, 29.3, 29.0. If you've seen a lot of these videos that I do, you don't see that sort of stability all the time. And that stability is really important to allow them to have operating leverage, hit the numbers they want to hit and grow over time. Now, you are seeing some interesting things because they have a higher earnings per share in 2020 when they had 17 billion in revenue than when they had 20.6 billion in revenue in 2021. So something weird is happening there and we can dive on a little bit more in the rest of the income statement. So in the income statement, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Your likes help to grow the channel. That really tells the YouTube algorithm that you're enjoying the video. So if you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. I need your likes to grow the channel. And if you're enjoying it, subscribe, then you can get all of my future uploads on investing topics. So we can see one thing down here on the income statement I see immediately is that they have a, basically no dilution. Uh, you do have shares diluted here, but the actual shares outstanding has stayed basically flat over the course of three or four years. I really like to see that. That's a good sign. Now, we can learn a little bit about something happening in 2020 that I had seen before is you have this non-operating income. I'd want to know a little bit more about this company, what's going on in these non-operating income years, because you have that show up in 2018, you have that show up in 2020, and those non-operating income is messing with this underlying um, earnings per share. So really what's most useful is to look at the operating profit because it's less affected by those adjustments. And you're saying you did have a dip in 2020 and you improved in 2021. That's more what you would expect than what we had seen before. So the lower revenue led to lower operating profit, higher revenue, higher operating profit. Although what I don't like to see is that your SG&A is growing very, very quickly. It's growing basically at the same rate as your gross profit. So you're not actually boosting and seeing a lot of operating leverage. I would much prefer if I could maintain similar operating expenses instead of massively growing ones. So I'd want to look into that and what's going on with this, especially something like research and development. Where is that money really being spent? Um, and are you getting a sufficient return on that? Let's see balance sheet. So PPE 1.6 billion, 
you know, you started off with a lot of goodwill. It's just to say that, I guess, at the time of the spinoff, you really had a big amount of intangible assets in the valuation. Um, the actual PP&E is really low. When you think about what you're seeing here is your PP&E is $2.4 billion, but your income, your operating profit is $2.4 billion. So you basically have 100% return on operating um, your PP&E, which is very, very strong. Um, it's just a lot of intangibles in this business that's lowering that overall return on capital. So the money that's needed to run the business is quite low. Now, you do have a very large long-term debt here. They took on $10 billion in 2020. I'm liable to forgive that because presumably that was to survive the pandemic, maybe loss in sales, something along those lines. Um, but that isn't a concern that you see such a big long-term debt number here. Hopefully this comes down a bit over time. See if our cash flow statement, we see anything interesting here. You do have some stock-based compensation. I don't know why you need stock-based compensation for an HVAC company. It's not a tech company. There shouldn't be any reason you have to compensate with stock. Um, but this is certainly growing a significant amount of over time. And that's how you have that dilution. And they're not really buying back that share steadily. So you are going to see dilution over time. I don't really like that in a company, especially if it's not needed. And you're not adding a lot of value with those growth. So for me, this is an interesting company. I'd have to learn more about it. Um, I'd really like a longer history to make a full assessment, but they have a lot of signs of a very high quality company. If they can grow over time, and if you're confident in that growth being double digit growth, that'd be really attractive. I mean, the valuation here is 11.7 PE. That's very, very cheap um, for a high quality company. So if you think that these earnings are real and a reason around, then, then I think the company is attractively priced. And I also think the company has the makings of high quality. You're getting double digit returns on equity, double digit returns on invested capital. Um, very strong and stable gross margins are allowing you to really run that business well. So it looks really, really good and really interesting. But for me, I just, I don't have a long enough history to assess and I'd really like more history before I add it to my watch list. But I see a lot of interesting qualities in Carrier Global here um, and it would reserve, deserve another look. Thank you for listening to this. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Your subscription allows me to grow the show and allows me to reach more people, have a greater impact, something we're all trying to do. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.